expert uh, Mani Sunthalia of Motilal Oswal Asset Management Company joins us to give us his take on the markets. Good morning, Manish. Good to have you with us. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, let me start with those industrial output numbers itself. Are you sufficiently enthused by those numbers to go out and buy any of the capital goods or consumer goods stocks? I mean, uh, if you see the details of the capital growth numbers, I think there was one item which saw, saw an exceptional growth, but uh, not, uh, and that was some rubber-related products uh, which saw some 250% sort of a growth. So, nonetheless, I think the manufacturing has come in at a 34-month high at 6.9%. Uh, that itself should be a, a good reading uh, on the numbers. But, uh, you know, talking about capital goods, uh, uh, you know, the order book position has got better, execution is somewhat better. This quarter you should be seeing something like a 14-15% sort of a growth. So all in all, it, it, would, it would be very stock selective. Among the large caps, it's obviously the Larson and Tubros of the world which would uh, be finding a place in our portfolio in the mid caps. We have Container Corporation, we have uh, uh, Voltas, etc., which would be there in our portfolio. No consumer durable that you would add? I mean, they're all, they're all jumping up today. Uh, Hitachi, Blue Star, uh, uh, Lloyds, anything that you pick up? So we have a Voltas, which is a play on consumer durables as well. And uh, we are very upbeat about the stock. Uh, it has a decent allocation in the portfolio. So we just look to add on this name in the portfolio. Okay. Manish, hi, morning. Uh, I'm going to come to the individual stocks in your portfolios. You have a very interesting bunch. But before that, uh, you also have uh, TCS in your portfolio. And we've seen the emphasis numbers that um, were, the numbers were good, but, you know, the, the, uh, some things about the fine print, whether it was the CFO resigning or the volume growth was tepid or some of the comments that H2 could be challenging, that spooked the stock a bit. Uh, how do you see the entire IT pack move and what would your expectation be from TCS itself? So the quarter uh, we saw uh, basically uh, good numbers uh, come out of uh, somewhat of a traction coming from currency. I mean, if Infosys is guiding that we'll see cross-currency headwinds uh, and uh, rupees also somewhat expected to appreciate in the short term, extreme short term. So I think it all boils down to valuation and growth, uh, uh, you know, in fee with the superb numbers which it declared. But the muted guidance somewhat gave an idea that you should be looking at uh, anywhere between 60 rupees of an EPS for FI 16, 64 to 66 uh, for FI 17. Whether there is a case of multiple expansion from current EPS levels, the answer would be a clear no. Unless and until we see some intra quarter guidance getting revised upwards, I mean, that is something which has been left on the table by the infill management. But this is not to begin with, uh, you know, starting at the beginning of the new quarter. Uh, I think expectations are somewhat more muted as far as uh, TCS numbers are concerned. If they do better numbers than uh, what INFI has done, obviously uh, that would be some sort of a surprise for the street and maybe TCS could uh, rally somewhat more than what INFI did because a lot of expectations were already built in INFI numbers. So it would be a case of an INFI and TCS as far as the large caps are concerned. Mid caps are not really very excited about the entire bunch. but. Uh, obviously, currency uh, benefits would be look more exaggerated in the case of mid-cap stocks, but uh, clearly, it, I mean, as far as my strategy goes, I will be sticking with the large caps. On. Okay, so sticking with uh, the large caps in the IT space, uh, you know, uh, from the auto space, Manish, you have a, a couple of stocks like uh, Aisha Motors, Bosch. Uh, that have Bharat Forge that have now started to resume their uptrend. Um, will you continue to back names like this or will you also look at some of the very beaten down names, say something like a Tata Motors or something like a Madison Sumi that may look more attractive now? I mean, those stocks would already be there on our radar, but I mean, we are not very excited about buying these names just yet because of the known problems um, for these names. Uh, I think uh, talking about the names that we have in our portfolio, we seem reasonably confident about uh, what sort of a growth numbers uh, would be seen for these stocks. As far as Bharat Forge is concerned, yes, there has been some haziness in demand uh, between last quarter and first quarter, uh, this quarter. 
both in terms of export uh, revenues as far as and also the domestic growth but it seems that everything everything is there in the price um, don't really see too much of a downside the stock has already corrected from a 30p to a 20p given the growth uh, which was to be north of 20% now should be anywhere between 15 to 18% as we move into FI17. So valuations are looking more reasonable. There is more comfort in buying the names that we have in our portfolio rather than looking to add anything uh, new, uh, particularly the name names which you took because of the uncertainty surrounding these uh, names. Okay, we've seen that dip in crude prices. Uh, uh, do you have anything uh, or would you persist buying any of the oil gas stocks? No, we are very, uh, uh, you know, bullish on the oil marketing companies. Uh, this quarter, you will see the inventory losses, and maybe that is the reason why the stocks are consolidating. So, NHPCL, BPCL would be the top picks that we have in our uh, PMS portfolios. Uh, I think the journey uh, looks quite interesting as we move into the future, particularly from the point of view of. Uh, you know the marketing margins uh, which to our mind may not have really peaked out uh, gross refining margins also has a scope to move on the higher side and inventory losses is something which is an in inherent part of the entire business model so given the valuation the higher dividend payout scope which exists on the oil marketing companies we are only excited about the downstream companies and not at all uh, the upstream companies uh, because uh, we think that crude is going to remain in a band between 40 and 70 for quite a considerable length of time, you know, maybe the next two, three, four years. So, uh, you know, it's it's a case of buying and then selling, so more of a trading bet rather than anything to do with fundamental long-term investing. Okay. Uh, from the mid-cap uh, banking space, it's interesting to see you have uh, DCB on your list or rather in your portfolio and that uh, bank announces its numbers later today. Uh, last quarter, you know, the, the numbers were quite muted and then the stock went into a consolidation phase. Uh, are you confident that the bank can return to the growth path and what would your expectations be for this quarter? So going by what the management is guiding, you know, doubling of balance sheet size in next three years, uh, I think this quarter we are going to see some margin expansion, 3.8% is what we are building in. Uh, the tax rate has gone up, so, you know, at the PAT level, uh, you'd see somewhat uh, YOY, flattish sort of a growth. But if you were to take pre uh, PPOP, uh, you know, uh, we should be seeing reasonable growth. Uh, if they are able to manage the asset quality as they have been, have, as they have been doing in the past, uh, it's a case of really following return on assets rather than you know, return on equity. Uh, they are self-sufficient in capital. Uh, so let's see what the numbers would be like. Uh, a small bank growing very aggressively with uh, very limited NPAs. I think it's a case of uh, good growth uh, going into the future, which may not be there entirely in the price. That's the main reason why we have DCB in the portfolio. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Manish, let's get to the stocks which we, uh, uh, you know, just continuing with the consumer durable thing, you, uh, consumer uh, consumption theme. You have specialty restaurants, uh, a very small uh, part of your portfolio, about 0.5%, we understand. Considering that you're seeing some kind of urban consumption, if the IIP numbers were to be believed, would you up this number? Uh, would you include uh, Jubilant Foodworks in it? Uh, uh, is this a stock that attracts you? Well, the multiples on Jubilant Foodwork may not be very exciting, uh, you know, but uh, because of the base effect on speciality, there always exists a case for upping the allocation on this name. And last quarter also we saw some decent numbers on a YOI basis. We saw some 19% sort of a growth in profits. Of course, the base is very small. But if urban consumption was to play out and uh, we see some decent same-store sales growth, added to that the new uh, restaurants which they are opening, coupled with some menu increase, uh, the price increase in the menus, uh, should lead to a good growth at the EBITDA and the PAT level, and which may not be there entirely in the price. So we are just waiting for the numbers to show some stability and some visibility going to the future, definitely, definitely be looking to up the allocation on this. Okay, and overall for the uh, 
earnings season itself what are your expectations for this quarter as well as for FY16 uh, have you scaled down your estimates further so i think this quarter obviously the commodity related names will see some uh, big knock on a yoy basis so if you we were to just exclude the commodity metal companies the refining and marketing companies and jlr you know these are the three names which will have a big bearing on the overall numbers i think numbers would look pretty decent uh, you know 5 to 6% of a top line growth 7 and 1/2 8% ebitda and uh, something like a 12 to 13 percent at the PAT level, which is uh, incrementally positive from first quarter numbers. And going forward, also I think uh, you know the raw material cost benefit should percolate down into margins, and this should be uh, you know would be reflected in the overall earnings as we move into the third quarter and the fourth quarter. I think overall this uh, this FY16, I think earnings growth would be limited to 10. 10 or percent 9 10 percent uh, when we compare it on an FY15 basis FY15 16 is going to be a margin expansion story FY17 we are building in some sort of a volume growth for you know com- consumer related names and even the base effect is expected to play or we should be clocking in something like an 18 20 percent growth in FY17 So that's how you know earning expectation has come down from 15% to 10% for FY16 recovery is delayed a lot of heavy lifting has to be done in the third and the fourth quarters um, you know incrementally quarter 2 should be better than quarter 1 roughly around 14 70 or there about should be our earning estimate for uh, FY16 All right, uh, we leave it at that. Thanks for joining us and taking us through the expectations from earnings as well as what your recommendations are on individual stocks or rather the stocks that you hold in your portfolio. But uh, for the market, it is at the lowest point of trade, so down about two tenths of a percent. It's not a grave sell-off or anything. It's just grinding to the bottom, as you can see. Uh, and the big stocks which are losing now are Hindalco, which is down almost three and a half percent. ONGC is down about three percent, and HCL Tech is down two and a half percent today.